Section 2.7, Derivatives and Rates of Change. We define the tangent line to the curve y equals f of x at the point p, a, f of a, to be the line through p with slope m, where m is the limit of f of x minus f of a over x minus a as x approaches a, provided that this limit exists. This uh, inside thing inside the limit should look a little bit familiar, as that is the slope of the secant line that goes through the point x, f of x, and the point a, f of a. Let's do an example of uh, finding the tangent line using this limit definition to find uh, an equation of the tangent line to the parabola y equals x squared at the point 1, 1. We did this before by uh, using a table and uh, seeing if we could roughly uh, guess where the limit would be, but now we'll actually do it more formally using the definition. So in this case, a equals 1 and f of x is equal to x squared. Our slope m is our limit as x approaches 1 of f of x minus f of 1 over x minus 1. So we can plug in to f of x for what it equals, which is x squared. We can plug into f of 1. 1 squared is 1. And then that's over x minus 1. Okay, to evaluate the limit, uh, we can't just plug in 1 because that would be 0 in the denominator. So what we can do instead is uh, factor the numerator. x minus 1, x plus 1, and divide by x minus 1. Okay, so that's just the limit. When we're dividing by uh, x minus 1 on top and bottom, uh, we don't have to worry about x equals 1 because we're only going nearby 1. So that means that it cancels and just leaves us with x plus 1. So now we can evaluate because that's a polynomial. So that's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So our slope is 2. For the equation of the tangent line, we can use point slope form y minus y1, which is 1, equals m, which is 2, times x minus x1, which is 1. And we can write that in y equals mx plus b form as y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, over here we have an alternative expression for the slope of a tangent line. So we say that this thing is the exact same thing as the expression as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. To convince yourself of that, you can let uh, x minus a be equal to h. So if uh, x minus a equals h, that means that x is a plus h. Right, you just add a both, to both sides. So that means that a plus h is the same as x. And that means that uh, h is the same as x minus a. So that means that as h, uh, sorry, as x goes to a, these two get very close to each other. So that means they basically become the same thing. It's the same thing as x, uh, as h going to zero. If x is subtracting a number that's getting closer and closer to x, that means that h is getting closer and closer to nothing. Okay, so let's uh, use this alternative expression to find an equation of the tangent line to the hyperbola y equals 3 over x at the point 3, 1. So in this case, it looks like our function f of x is 3 over x. We will find the slope m as the limit as h goes to 0 of f of uh, a plus h, so that's 3 plus h, minus f of 3, because that's the x value we're going towards, and we divide by h. So that is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of 3 over 3 plus h minus 1, 
over h when we plug in. So that's the limit as h goes to 0 of 3 minus 3 plus h over 3 plus h. We find a common denominator 3 plus h, and 1 over 1 is 3 plus h over 3 plus h, and we divide by the h we had. So uh, by dividing through, we get that this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of minus h over h times 3 plus h. Uh, since we're going near 0 but not equal to 0, we can cancel out the h. And we just get that it's the uh, limit of minus 1 over 3 plus h, which is minus 1 third, because now we can plug in 0 with no repercussions. OK, so again, let's use point slope form. y minus y1, which is 1, is m, which is minus 1 third, times x minus x1, which in this case is 3 for x value. Uh, we could also write this in uh, standard form as x plus 3y minus 6 equals 0. But the form doesn't matter a ton. If you were to take a look at a graph, if y equals uh, 3 over x, it should look uh, something like this. Similar to the graph of y equals 1 over x. And then we want the tangent line at 3, 1. So that's this tangent line roughly right over there. That's x plus 3y minus 6 is 0, which makes sense because uh, the uh, x-intercept is when y is 0. If you plug in 0, you get 6 for the x-intercept. And for the y-intercept, that's when x is 0, so you plug in 2. So that's the point 3, 1, and this is y equals 3 over x. A function f describing the motion of an object along a straight line is called a position function and has velocity v of a is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h at time t equals a. So as an example, suppose that a ball is dropped from the upper observation deck of the CN Tower, 450 meters above the ground. We call it the distance in meters fallen after t seconds is 4.9 t squared. So that means that our position function, s, is f of t, is 4.9 t squared. We want to find the velocity of the ball after 5 seconds, so we should find the velocity function v of t. If the uh, velocity at time t equals a is given by that limit above, then the velocity at a general time t would be if we just replaced a with t. So this would be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of t plus h, instead of a plus h, minus f of t divided by h. So now we plug in uh, t plus h instead of uh, plugging in uh, t. So we have 4.9, oops, forgot our limit. Four point nine times t plus h squared minus f of t, which is just our regular four point nine t squared divided by h. Okay, so we have to foil out that t plus h squared. So we get four point nine times t squared plus to th plus h squared minus t squared 
over h, which is equal to the limit 4.9 times 2 th plus h squared because of all our cancellations, t squared minus t squared, and we have over h. So we can write this as the limit of 4.9h by factoring out an h times 2t plus h. And we want to do that because we want to get rid of our h in our denominator so we can actually plug in 0. So our h cancels, and now we can plug in a uh, 0 and just get it's equal to 9.8t. So to find the velocity after 5 seconds, we just look at v of 5. That's 9.8 times 5, which is 49 meters per second. Let's see how fast the ball is traveling when it hits the ground. So it hits the ground, let's see, it was 450 meters above the ground. The position function is the distance that it's already fallen. So that means that we want to know um, how fast the ball is traveling after it's fallen 450 meters. So that's at position equal to 450. So that means that 4.9t squared is equal to 450, which we can divide and get t squared is equal to 450 over 4.9. So when we take a square root, we only consider the pos positive uh, square root because we're not time travelers. So we get 450 over 4.9, which is roughly 9.6 seconds. So we're looking for the velocity at square root of 450 over 4.9, which is 9.8 times 450 over 4.9, which is about 94 meters per second. The derivative of a function f at a number a denoted by f prime of a is defined to be the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h goes to zero. And we read that as f prime of a. Remember, this is the exact same thing as the first limit we talked about of the slope of the secant line, which is f of x minus f of a over x minus a, provided these uh, limits exist. So let's find the derivative of the function f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 9 at the number a. So f prime of a is equal to the limit as h goes to a of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Okay, so we plug in a plus h instead of uh, plugging in x. So We get that that's a plus h squared minus 8 times a plus h plus 9 minus a squared minus 8a plus 9. And that's all over h. Then that's the limit. Well, we can uh, foil out the a plus h squared. We get a squared plus 2ah plus h squared, and then distribute the 8, and then plus 9 minus a squared plus 8a 
minus 9. Okay, so it looks like at this point a uh, whole bunch of stuff cancels. It looks like our a squared and a squared is canceling. It looks like our uh, minus 8a and plus 8a are plus 9 and minus 9. So this limit becomes 2ah plus h squared minus 8h over h. And that we can cancel out the h by factoring out and dividing. So that's 2a plus h minus 8. Okay, so we can just plug in for h now, and we get that this is equal to 2a minus 8 when h is 0. Let's find an equation of the tangent line to the parabola y equals x squared minus 8x plus 9 at the point 3 minus 6. Well, we just calculated that the derivative f prime at a is equal to 2a minus 8. So that means that the uh, slope m of the tangent line is equal to f prime of 3 at x equals 3. So we can just plug in 3 for a, we get 2 times 3 minus 8, which is minus 2. So now we can use point slope form. We get y minus y1, which is minus 6, is equal to m, which is minus 2, times x minus x1, which is 3, which is the same as y equals minus 2x when you simplify. Suppose y is a quantity that depends on another quantity x. Then y is a function of x, and we write y equals f of x. If x changes from x1 to x2, then the change in x, also called the increment of x, is delta x, which is x2 minus x1. The corresponding change in y is delta y, the increment of y. It's f of x2 minus f of x1. We then say that the average rate of change of y with respect to x over the interval x1 to x2 is delta y over delta x, which is f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. That should look familiar. That's the slope of the secant line. We then say that the instantaneous rate of change, or we just say the rate of change of y with respect to x is the limit of uh, delta y over delta x, the change in y over change in x, as the change in x delta x goes to zero, which is the same thing as x2 getting closer and closer to x1. That makes this denominator zero. And that is the same thing as our derivative f prime of x. Okay, as an example, uh, a manufacturer produces bolts of a fabric with a fixed width. The cost of producing x yards of this fabric is c equals f of x dollars. What is the meaning of the derivative f prime of x? What are its units? Well, f prime of x means the rate of change. Our derivative is always a rate of change of the production cost. with respect to the number of yards produced. We also call that the marginal cost. F prime of x, by definition, is equal to the limit as delta x goes to 0 of, in this case, delta c, because we're using c instead of y, over delta x. 
our cost is in dollars, our delta x is in yards. So that means that our units or the units for our derivative f prime of x are dollars per yard. In practical terms, what does it mean to say that f prime of a thousand is nine? Well, that means that after one thousand yards have been have been manufactured, the rate at which because that's what our derivative is, the production cost is increasing is $9 per yard. Okay, which do you think is greater, f prime of 50 or f prime of 500? What about f prime of 5,000? Well, you probably think, okay, if you can produce more items, then economics will scale will kick in at some point and make it a little bit, uh, uh, the, the rate at which production costs increasing will probably be uh, uh, slowed down a little bit because it won't cost you as much to produce your next item if you can produce enough of them. So maybe f prime of 50, the cost of just, uh, the rate at which it's increasing to produce each additional item is probably more when you're just producing a couple of them than when you're producing 500. And we're guessing maybe this is due to economics of scale. And obviously there's a million different answers you could give to this question. Uh, but then maybe at some point uh, when you try producing too many, you bite off more than you can chew. You end up with inefficiency and over overtime costs, so maybe the cost of labor becomes prohibitive. So maybe at five thousand, it's just a little bit too much. Usually, there's a sweet spot in manufacturing. So maybe it costs more to produce the five thousandth item due to uh, inefficiency or overtime costs or any other reason you want to make up. Let d of t be the U.S. national debt at time t. The table gives approximate values of this function by providing end-of-year estimates in billions of dollars from 1985 to 2010. Interpret and estimate the value of d prime of 2000. Well, d prime of 2000 means the rate of increase, that's what our derivative is, of the, in this case, national debt D in 2000. Okay, let's estimate D prime of 2000 now. D prime of 2000 is equal to the limit as T goes to 2000 of our slope of our secant line, d of t minus d of 2,000 over t minus 2,000. Remember that's the uh, average rate of change, just this part is the average rate of change. And then when we take the limit, we get the instantaneous rate of change, or the rate of change. So in order to estimate the rate of change, we'll use the average rate of change. We can make a table as we've done previously. And in 1985, if we plug that in for t over here, we could do d of 1985 minus d of 2000 over 1985 minus 2000. 
and we would get 247.75. Similarly, if we plug in 1990, we get 229.74. If we plug in 1995, we would get 134.70. We can't plug in 2000, that would make our denominator zero. It also doesn't make sense to look at the change from 2000 to 2000. So we skip to 2005, and that's 501.64. And in 2010, that would be 836.30. We estimate that our instantaneous rate of change at 2000 is in between these two values, right? Because 2000 is in between 1995 and 2005. So we take the average. So the uh, D prime of 2000 will be approximately that average, which is 318. And that's in billion dollars per year. This is the rate of change.